What is evolution? Defining biological evolution. It's me, Moser. After this video, you should be able to define biological evolution both in terms of changes that happen in a species over time as well as in changes of the genetics of a species over time. You should also be able to identify a phylogenetic tree as showing the evolutionary relationships between species. You should be able to recall that living things have been on Earth for most of its history and recognize that species evolve. Individuals don't. Are you ready? Let's go. You may have heard the word evolution before. It may bring many things to mind from monkeys and humans, to antibiotic resistant bacteria, from peppered moths to Galapagos finches. So what is biological evolution? Hmm. Biological evolution is simply the fact that species and populations change over time and that those changes are passed on to new generations. This is different from the changes an individual goes through in their lifetime. <laughs> I just had to get a cute puppy picture in. That's growth and maturation. The fact that species change means that very often the next generation is a little different from the one before it, from its ancestors. That seems pretty simple, right? Have you ever stopped to marvel at life on this planet? We have got cool, weird, amazing, hard to believe stuff living on this strange little rock. The modern theory of biologi biological evolution explains how that amazing diversity and abundance of living things on this earth can all share a common ancestor and how small changes can really add up given enough time. The first living thing on Earth would have looked a lot like, well, a modern bacteria. So wait a minute, something like this leads to, to all this? I mean, come on. Sure, living things could look different from their ancestors, but really? Doesn't this sound just a little bit crazy? Doesn't it? Well, what about this? leading to these. Still crazy? No? Does that seem a little bit more reasonable? Or this leading to these? This leading to these? What about these leading to these? Something like this leading to things like these? Stuff like this guy leading to those? What about this leading to this? Or this leading to these? Is this seeming not quite as crazy? Perhaps possible? Please note that this is not an actual evolutionary sequence. When we break it down into these smaller steps, and think about accumulated changes, this doesn't sound quite as crazy as it did. Well, what makes all these living things different from one another? Their traits, their characteristics. Traits like having a single cell or having many, having two or four or six legs, having no legs, performing photosynthesis, or having to eat others for energy. What controls these traits and characteristics? Aha, they're genes. They're DNA. We'll talk more about that later. This is a phylogenetic tree. 
Sometimes it's called the biological tree of life. It's just a diagram, and it shows the relationships between groups of living things. Sort of like a big family tree, not like this family tree. It's generated by tracking differences, either in DNA or in physical traits, between living things, between species. We can create a phylogenetic tree for all the species on Earth. Wow, that is a big genetic tree. Or we can create them for a small group of species, like flowering plants, vertebrates, something else. Either way, how cool! Evolution is the result of many, many tiny, tiny changes. But the thing is, these changes add up over a very long time. How long? Whew, as long as there have been living things on Earth. How long is that? Why, I am glad you asked. The scale of Earth time, hoo -hoo, it is long. Earth formed about 4.6 billion years ago. That is 4,600,000,000 years ago. It wasn't the nice-looking place it is now. It was so hot to start off with, there wasn't even liquid water. It took a long time to cool off. How do we know this? Well, we know that it formed 4.6 billion years ago because of chemical testing that has been done on rocks from both the Earth and from the Moon. There's a link in the grid for more information if you're curious. The first evidence we have of primitive living things is between about 3.7 and 3.8 billion years ago. Again, 3,700,000,000 to 3,800,000,000. The evidence comes in the form of a type of carbon molecule that's really only produced by living things. And we can find it in rocks of this age. If you're curious, it's called biogenic carbon. And boy, those pictures are not exciting at all. The first clear evidence of living things that we find in the form of fossils show up in rocks that are 3.5 billion years old. 3 billion 500 million. They're called stromatolites. And they're fossilized mats of bacteria that trapped sediment. They leave very distinctive patterns. They're still forming in some places on the planet, but we have fossil evidence of very, very old ones. We don't see any direct fossil evidence of animals until 600 million years ago. Million! We changed units! And they sure don't look like anything we'd think of as an animal. Why are they weird? The first mammals that show up in the fossil record, they look a lot like modern rodents. They're very small, and they show up 300 million years ago. They actually were living at the same time as the dinosaurs. Ha ha! Go team mammal! Well, we know who won that one. We can trace a modern species such as this one, or this one, or this one, or this one, or this one, this one, all mammals, back to that very first mammal species. So what makes all those mammal species similar? Well, their traits, their characteristics, their heterotrophs, they regulate their body temperature, they nurse their babies, they got fur, there are some more. What causes those traits and characteristics? Oh yeah, their DNA, their genes. And what makes these mammal species, or any other species, different from each other? Well, 
their traits and characteristics. What causes those traits and characteristics? Their DNA, their genes. So what is evolution? Well, it's inherited biological change in a species over time. It's going from looking like that little shrew looking thing, the first mammal, to an elephant. It's changes in how often a trait appears in a species. If we dig down under that, it's really changes in how frequently a certain version of a gene could appear in a population. Because how often a trait appears or how frequently a certain version of a gene appears, those things change species. You got questions? Write them down. We're just getting started. Hopefully we'll be able to answer all your questions in the course of this unit. So for right now, let's just review what you should be able to do. Can you define biological evolution both in terms of changes in a species and changes in the genetics of a species over time? Can you identify a phylogenetic tree and you know that it shows evolutionary relationships between species? Do you remember that living things have been on Earth for the vast majority of its history? And do you recognize that it's species that evolve, not individuals? Aww, gratuitous cute puppy picture. That's not evolution, though. All right, fantastic. Go on and do your recap, reflect, and review.